So what is going on guys, NandoPaints93 here with another video and this has to be one of the most requested videos I've gotten in a really long time. It's basically how my workflow works, for lack of a better word, uh, when I use just my iPhone, which I'm using right now to record this video, and just my iPad to edit, to edit not only the thumbnail, but all the video clips and upload it and you know get it ready to publish on YouTube. So I use almost no dongles. The only dongle I use is the one that's on right here right now for the, the lightning to 3.5 millimeter jack for this microphone. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through what that process is like, because it's very simple. And I've been doing this YouTube channel like seriously for about three to four months now, and it's been solely done with iPhones and iPads. Whether it's like an older iPad, an older iPhone, or the new ones that I have now, I have, you know, there, there's no SD card like adapter needed. I don't have a separate camera. I don't have like a laptop that I use to edit. It's just these two devices, and these two devices have gotten me to where we are today, which is like over 3,000 subs and all that. So it's really not, it's like make the most of what you have as opposed to like going out and spending pretty much thousands of dollars on like new equipment, right? So just to start it off, as you guys can see, I have a little microphone, which this is a, a recent update about three to four weeks ago. I got this microphone because you guys told me, hey, it's a little echoey wherever you are and it just doesn't make, uh, and it's a little echoey wherever you are and you just need to kind of up, upgrade that, which was true. So, and you guys have liked that, that upgrade. So now what I'm gonna show you is how I basically get whatever I record on the iPhone to the iPad. So I'm gonna put two screens here. Hopefully it's a little bit visible. I'm gonna back up. So basically what I do is record it on my iPhone, which I'll have right here, and then airdrop, once it's done recording, I'll airdrop it to the iPad. And once it's on the iPad, then I can just start going to work into LumaFusion. So we're gonna switch the camera angle once, once this is done, and I'm gonna show you guys just how I do it on LumaFusion. I'll probably do a little fast forwarding because I don't want to sit there and bore you guys, but that is my workflow when it comes to editing these applications. And then somebody also brought up in a comment, which was very interesting, is like they wanted to see how I interact with the iPad like physically, right? Because now between the mouse, keyboard, and pencil, there's a bunch of different ways to interact with the iPad. So definitely take note of how I use the pencil. I don't really use a mouse when I'm editing because it's not as precise as the pencil. I use the mouse mostly to kind of like browse around, scroll up and down, things like that. So again, just take note of how I'm interacting with the iPad because I use my finger, I use the Apple Pencil to pinpoint things, I type in, you know, overlay titles, I type in whatever the title of the, of the video is gonna be, things like that. So let's move to the new camera angle. All right guys, so now that it's airdropped into my iPad, you guys can see that these videos right here, or this video is what I'm gonna be editing. Again, this is gonna be one clip, so this is a very simplified version of what I normally do, but if I go right into LumaFusion, which is the best iPad video editing app right now because of, because iMovie in my opinion isn't, doesn't have like any choices really, but LumaFusion is just the best in comparison to like a Final Cut Pro option. So go down here to the bottom left, start up a new tab or a new project, X out of here and then I'm gonna call it uh, last minute, but this is the workflow guys. So anything, what's great about LumaFusion is that you can use any folder system that you have access to on your iPad. So you can go into the regular, you know, photos and videos that we normally deal with, or you can even, you know, import from Dropbox, iCloud, title images, story blocks, title, you can go into your file system if you want, add a link to folder, but I like to stay as simple as possible so there's not that many steps. The only time I use an imported file is when I go to my Dropbox, it has a couple SoundCloud instrumentals that I use for a little bit of background, you know, a little bit of background noise. So, and here obviously it's listed in order by date created. So sometimes for some reason this has been happening lately where you see the little bars here. So what I've been having to do is go out, X out of it, open it back up, and then magically you, those little bars go, go away and you can kind of see where the sound happens, right? So this is what I'm dealing with right here. I already know that I'm going to cut this out because this is the beginning. And what I like to do initially is edit the LUTs, right? Like change the, if I go into here, change the LUTs, darkens it up a little bit, might use this one. There's a bunch of different ones, right? There's a color pop option, which is kind of nice too. Makes my nose look a little bit red, but it's there, right? But I, I, this is the one that I usually go with, and then I kind of blend it a little bit into the 30s. So that's good to go. And from this menu is where you also change the volume of the clip, change the speed of the clip and also crop it if you need to. So 
that's pretty much the editing process. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video and then come back and show you guys how I export it and then how I upload it into YouTube. All right guys, so I've pretty much edited the bulk of the video, like the hard part of going through the clips and overlaying them. So if you guys can see, I got two layers right now and I wanted to kind of fast forward and show you. I kind of wanted to fast forward and show you the process of, I'm gonna add a layer for a little background music and then I'm also gonna add the end screen edits that you guys always see at the end of the video. And I wanna show you guys how I do it and how I'm interacting with the iPad. I'll probably put this at two or three times speed so it doesn't bore you guys too much, but people have been wanting to see like how I interact with the iPad. So if you guys can see to like enlarge and make, make the timeline longer, I use my fingers with the pencil. That's where I start to like look for things. So for instance, I'm gonna get the, if I scroll, so these are the videos, I gotta go to all photos and videos scroll down and find this is my end screen credit right so I put it at the end I make it about 10 to 12 seconds long I cut this so what I do is I cut this main clip because I have to move it so if I double click on that go here nope wrong one so yeah so if I double click on this I can move it over so I'm in the frame with the end credit scene right and then what I do is I add a little transition so it looks smooth. Add this transition at the end, and that's the end screen, guys. So if I press play, uh, really like, I was doing a lot of research and wanted to share with you guys what I found. And boom, it's just it's that simple. And then what I do is make it really small because I grab the same song over and over again because the song is only about two minutes. Go into my imported Dropbox, hold this down, put it underneath. Do this as many times as I need to, to fill in the bottom. I'll go to the end here, kind of enlarge it, cut that, delete that. Then what I do is I wanna edit how loud it is, right? Cause obviously if I press play, you hear the music. So turn that volume down. I usually go about 30, 37 decibels is where I usually keep it at. And then instead of going to every single one and doing that over and over again, what I can do is I can just copy what I did to it, paste it to this one. And you can see that, so that one line there shows you that the volume is going down on that whole clip. So this is done and ready to export and all you do is you press the share button, movie, put it into photos. I've never actually tried going directly to YouTube and I don't wanna do that right now. I like to put it uh, into my you know normal photos application, but you know, let this export should take about five, 10 minutes, depending on what's going on. Uh, but as you can see, it's exporting it fine. It was rendering it, I was rendering the video live as I was editing it. And then I'm gonna show you guys how I upload it to YouTube and that'll be it, that, guys, that'll, that's the workflow. So that's pretty much my workflow in a nutshell. So I go from recording on the iPhone, airdropping it to the iPad, editing all the video and photos on the iPad with LumaFusion, and then uploading it to YouTube straight out of the Safari app. So again, everything is seamless. I'm not using any dongles. There's no SD cards to keep track of. And as you can see, like the iPhone camera is enough. I mean, for right now, do I eventually want to get a camera? Maybe, right? Maybe if it makes sense for me, if I really want to freaking take this like up to the next level, but most people aren't going to see the difference. Most people watch this on their phones. Most people are watching this in 720p because they have an iPhone 10R or an iPhone 11 and YouTube can't even push 1080p on an iPhone for some reason. So getting it like a 4K camera and I can record in 4K with this thing. So if I want to get like a, so like a 4K camera with like, like a mirrorless camera, it's going to cost me like $800 and I don't really want to make, spend, make that investment yet. And at the same, like I said, people watch this on their phones. Like my analytics say that 75% of people that watch my videos is on their phone. So they're watching it on a screen that's anywhere between like 4.7 inches and like 6.7, depending on what iPhone you have. And it's going to be small enough where like the pixels aren't going to matter, right? So that, those are the things that you kind of have to play with, keep in mind when you're doing something like this. And that's my workflow, like I said, in a nutshell. So hopefully this is informative for some people. And like I said, if you keep it in the Apple ecosystem, it's very easy. That's why, I don't know, like Android phones and Android tablets just like don't make sense. I mean, I don't, I don't like them. Pixels are kind of nice. Samsung makes great hardware. Like the screens look absolutely unreal. But other than that, nothing beats Apple's ecosystem. AirDrop, you know, iMessage. I know I'm going on a rant here, but that's all, that's all it is, guys. So hopefully, again, this helps somebody. I know that some people in the comments are like thinking about starting a channel and they got an iPad for that purpose. So here's proof that you can edit on an iPad with LumaFusion, export it and put it and then upload it 
onto YouTube. So that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. I'm going to be pumping out a lot of videos over the weekend and in December, trying to really get this channel to grow in December. So until next time, guys, peace.